to have you with us in the 9 p.m. edition of the Urban Debate. Today marked the first anniversary, one full year of the farmers' protest. A protest that began 365 days ago, demanding the repeal of the three contentious farm laws. A protest that actually began in small parts just as the farm laws were being discussed and were passed in the parliament. But soon, the farmers from various parts landed up at the borders of the national capital, where they then sat and sat on a dharna for one long year. A year ago, this mega movement of the farmers started that led to the government giving in just a few days ago. Finally, the Prime Minister accepting the demand and in his address to the nation on November 19th, the Prime Minister said that the three farm laws will be repealed by the government. From absolutely not even recognizing or acknowledging the protests, the demands, or that there was any problem with the farm laws, to then sitting across the table with these farmers, having a conversation and constantly saying that they can make changes, they can change the clauses, contentious clauses, there can be a conversation, but the government will not repeal the law. To then a part where absolutely no conversation happened with the farmers, with, between the government and the farmers. No meeting all, at all for months together. Nothing moved except that the farmers continued to sit on their protest. At that point of time, we saw constant villainizing of these farmers and their demands. Political motives were attributed and what not. But now, the laws will be repealed that the government has made clear. Today, as one year was completed, the farmers from Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Punjab and Haryana marched towards the Delhi borders where the protests were being held. And they say that their movement and their stir isn't over yet. They say they still need to see the laws being repealed. They say they still need to see and hear about a legal assurance on the minimum support price and not just for a handful of crops but make that the norm they say that the contentious electricity amendment bill must be withdrawn they say let's also have a conversation about doubling farmers income and so the movement continues with the government having taken this mega step of deciding to withdraw the laws should there at least now be some break? Should the farmers go home, end this protest while continuing the conversation with the government? Can that happen? Let's also not forget that the top court said that you can hold your protests, but you can't block roads indefinitely. That the right to agitate doesn't mean blocking roads, that you can't lay down law on protests repeatedly. And that road blockade issue must be resolved. And of course, when the Supreme Court said this the last time, after having repeated it multiple times, the governments and the police department did move to clear a lot of the road blockades, to clear, clear, clear a lot of the barricades which are on the roads blocking the traffic without actually disturbing the farmers' protest. And that movement continues. So there are two sides to the whole debate today. One side says that, well, the government has agreed to your biggest demand. Instead of now asking for more and more, why don't you go back and let it not become a political issue with elections in Punjab and Uttar Pradesh round the corner. The others say, because the farmers have suffered for so long, because the farmers have been ignored in our country for so long, and because their problems, the actual issues, haven't gone away, even though the farm laws have, the movement must continue until steps are taken that help them. Those are the two sides of the story. Should the protest end or not? That's the big question. I say good evening to Yogendra Yadav, Chief for Swaraj India, Adil Singh Boparai, National Spokesperson for the Congress Party, Lalit Patil Bahale, President for the Shetkari Sangatan, Shana NC, Spokesperson for the BJP, also joining me this evening. What should be the form of the movement 
From here on, Mr. Yogendra Yadav, does it have to continue at the Delhi borders or could there be other methods? Uh, then we, uh, tomorrow the same Kisan Morcha is meeting to take precise this decision. Therefore, for me to say this is what the Morcha has decided would be wrong premature. I can only express some general opinions. Uh, you have correctly said that the Prime Minister has conceded the first and the most important demand. There is no doubt about that. We have acknowledged it. We have uh, said this to the Prime Minister. We have said that uh, we welcome this declaration. At the same time, Tanvi, you know that right from the beginning, from day one, actually day minus one, we have raised the issue of MSP. I say minus one because we reached Delhi on the 26th of November last year. On 14th of October last year, one month before arriving to Delhi, we presented a memorandum to government of India that clearly registers MSP as one of our key demands. In fact, three of our key demands in that memorandum list relate to MSP. We hold 11 rounds of talk. We mention MSP in every single one of those talks. The government acknowledges this in its written communication. We hold Kisan Sansan, in which we for two full days discuss MSP. So Tanvi, just to remind all the viewers, this is not something we have fished out. Once we know Mr. Modi has considered the big demand, now let's come up with something new. No, nothing of that sort is happening. All we are doing, and this is the most reasonable thing to do, Tanvi, uh, you present the government with two big baskets of demands. The government does not hold negos talk with you at that time, simply makes a one-sided declaration. Would you not say, sorry, there was something else we demanded? Did you not hear that? And in the course of every single movement, and I cannot think of a single exception in the last 20, 30 years of Andolans that I have seen, some issues come up in the course of Andolans, which relate mostly to arrest, to fatalities, if any. In this case, there are about 700 martyrs that we, have, uh, we are looking at. These issues are always settled towards the end. That's what we have done. So we have done nothing very unreasonable or unusual. All that we have done so far is to write to the prime minister of the country to say, sorry, you probably forgot about these things. These are our issues. We have simply said, please speak to us about these things. Is that unreasonable? Or should we simply have listened to the prime minister and said, oh, you've accepted our demand number one. Thank you very much. We are leaving. That's not how this it happens then. We, I can understand a lot of people asking us questions about when we should get up. These are There are two categories, those who have always wanted us never to arrive in Delhi. So when they say, when are you getting up? Well, I can only smile. But there are also those who have supported, who have understood why we came, and who are saying, why don't you balance the two considerations? To them, I would say, we are very conscious of it. Believe us, we are not fond of staying on roads. We would like to engage with the government in the most constructive, in the most flexible, in the most open-minded, open-hearted conversation, provided the government engages in it. Hmm. So far, five days have passed. We have not had any response from the government. I sincerely hope that get it before 12 o'clock tomorrow when we meet to take the final decision. And if the government does respond, I can assure you, open on television, national television, I'm saying we would look at the government response in the most open-minded manner because the prime minister has conceded the first demand that we had made. Yes, But okay. for that, we need a response. Fair enough. The interesting point that you've made is that if there is a response, what what is it that the protesting farmers would be looking out for right now? China and C is an indication by the government that it's all not over yet. We are willing to talk because we are cognizant of the fact that the issues remain. Uh, the problems of the agri community still remain, whether or not laws stay or not. And there needs to be an indication that we will have those conversations with you. Should that be the next step by the government then? China. Absolutely. I mean, conversation is welcome at every time. Even in this one year, there have been over 19 serious meetings with the Honorable Prime Minister uh, where 
this is not about us versus them, victory or defeat. This is about ensuring that the farmers are heard and India is heard. I think a statesman like Prime Minister Modi has shown utmost humility. The way he has come forward and said, yes, we will repeal the three farm laws despite the Swaminathan committee, despite the fact that in some way or the other, the farmers will need to have some kind of consideration vis-a-vis -vis all three points of the farm laws. And without going into any kind of repetition, I only want to say, at this juncture, when you have finished uh, just a huge round of COVID and if there is an expected third wave, which is unfortunate and we hope not, but despite that, these kind of protests really do no service to any of the farming community also. If you talk about the three basic farm laws that have been repealed and constitutionally cabinet has already discussed this yesterday, we know that in the coming session, these will be repealed. Now, if you continue to just protest and agitate, then I think that dialogue and discussion is the only way forward. We are welcome to have that. And as Yogendra Ji said, that he has a contention when it comes to MSP, we have lots of suggestions too. I mean, these are not suggestions that came up from the Bharatiya Janata Party. This is long pending. We've had government after government that has only given freebies, subsidies, SOPs. You have had farmers that have relied on all kinds of loans. But at the same time, we are working on better technology, better systems in place so that our farming community is given the opportunity uh, to better themselves through the best technology. No, that is good. I mean, th that sounds good, Shaina. But the fact of the matter is that the 19 meetings that you talked about all took place before February last year, February 2021. Uh, and since February 2021, no, no meeting has actually taken place. Neither has the government asked the farmers to come and have any conversations with them. Now, since the announcement has been made, uh, five days have passed. Is the government waiting? Will the government wait for farmers to cancel their uh, protest and go back home to call them or send that indication and then take things forward? That's where things stand. Because at the end of the day, the issues still remain. Mr. Lalit Bahale, where do you stand on this uh, uh, debate? Who should now take the next step, the farmers or the government? Uh, Tanvi, I am waiting for another black day for the farmers. When government will announce that uh, MSP is now having a statutory status, that will be another black day. It was a black day on uh, when uh, Prime Minister repealed this law. So, uh, I mean, the, he announced for repealing the law. I don't know these MSP people, they have understood MSP or not. But if, if they read something about CACP, which is going to uh, finalize or which is going to uh, suggest the MSPs, what are, what are the determinants of MSP, uh, MSP for how they determine MSP actually, the um, CACP? What, what are the determinants? The first determinant is the demand and supply within the country. The other determinant is production cost. Then international prices. There are seven such determinants. And at the last, CACP says MSP, when we decide MSP or when we suggest MSP to the government, the, uh, they, they put a note in it. What they say? They say, that only uh, production cost is not the thing which, which is to be considered. Mm. Many other things are to be considered and they are also important for considering. And the most important thing is the prices, uh, prices which are affordable to the uh, consumers. Mm. This is, these are the determinants of MSP. I don't know the people who are trying, uh, saying that MSP should be uh, legalized and it should be uh, mandatory on the private, uh, pr private purchasers. It is like having reservation in the private sector of industries for the, the Mandal Ayog, Mandal Ayog should be 
taken to the private industry it is like that hmm. and i don't know whether mr, mr. bali uh, let me ask you this without you know uh, l- 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 since you raise the issue of uh, msp and its calculation you are of the view that it should shouldn't just be production cost you also have to factor in what the consumer will be will end up paying what should be the calculation of msp no msp there shouldn't be any co- calculation for msp there should be calculation of production cost yeah the the the, the thing you you have to calculate is the, what what is the production cost yeah and production cost in the, the way cacp calculates the production cost is uh, very vague we suggest that if you want to if you want to calculate production cost you should have a synthetic model method so that the all co- the, the differences should not be there what i produce what uh, what cost i need to uh, i need for production of chana sh- uh, is not equal to the what uh, uh, madhya pradesh people need needs the uh, p- cost okay. for production okay. of chana okay so let, let you you highlighted an interesting point adil before i come to you i just want yogendra yadav to speak on it because at the end of the day every conversation that we have about msp literally boils down to how do you calculate it to begin with uh, where do you put the cap and how do you do this uh, uh, production cost calculation mr yadav uh may i just thank mr bahale for the tutorial on msp uh i did not need it but i thought uh, some uh, viewers may benefit from that uh, while mr bahale would like me to read uh, cacp reports which i routinely read sir i am a very routine reader of cacp report they actually invited me used to invite me to give them inputs on their reports uh but uh, may i also request you to please read uh what the sayukta kisan morcha has demanded uh it is not what you think we have demanded from at least your summary uh it so happens that mr bahale rep- represents that stream in the farmers movement and numerically almost insignificant it's like the mythical saraswati uh which has believed that wto is great which believes that uh, farmers can be gain from private sector which believes that msp things like msp should not exist so i would not uh, is you know spent too much energy on debating there because that's a stream that has been answered by history uh, i would simply point out two or three things number one what does it mean when we say give us msp guarantee it means three things number one msp as of today is merely an executive order the word minimum support price does not figure anywhere in any statute of this country we are saying no we don't want this to depend on government's whims and fancies we want this to be a statutory right just as uh, manrega became a statutory right after the act was passed just as getting ration is today a statutory right similarly uh, just as minimum wages is a statutory right similarly msp should be a statutory right number 2 we want the point that you referred uh, than we just now we want the calculation of msp to be improved uh currently it is based on partial cost of the farmers the government officially says it is based on a to fl plus 50% we want it to be c2 plus 50% which is to say we want not just partial cost plus 50% we want comprehensive cost plus 50% that's our second demand but the third and the most important i mean operationally the most important demand than we is that whatever the government de- uh, declares low or high executive or legal the farmers should get it the fact is that in this country even today not more than 15 to 20% farmers get msp the official figure in one of the reports is merely 6% but i am giving them benefit of doubt not more than 15 to 20% farmers get it so we are saying the government should ensure that farmers receive equivalent of msp we are not saying the government should purchase all the 23 crops in its entirety that's not what we want what we want is the government should ensure that the farmers receive that much price which is to say if the paddy price today is 1940 rupees per quintal according to msp and if farmers in uttar pradesh are getting 1200 1300 1100 then it should be the government's responsibility to ensure that they get 1940 
This the government can do either by procuring it itself or by making a deficit payment, covering up the deficit between the two, which is exactly what the Haryana government has done this year for Bajra. Or the government can do selective intervention in the market and make sure that prices do not fall below 1940. Or the government can tinker with the import-export policy. And finally, the government, having done this to supplement and, and to ensure the government can also make a law, which is exactly what Mr. Narendra Modi had recommended in 2011, that in the market, no, no, no uh, bully uh, should begin. Uh, there should be no auction which begins below the MSP. A combination of these five steps can ensure that the farmers get their MSP. This is what we want. So let's debate what we actually want. Hmm. Let us not debate the mythical, scaremongering stuff that has been going rounds on television and newspapers for the last four or five days, because most of that is so ridiculous that it's not even worth responding to. Okay, I, I, you, you know, one point that often comes up, and, I, and you refer to it, and we must highlight, is that the demand is not to say that the government needs to buy all of the produce at that MSP and pay for it, because obviously nobody expects the government to have that kind of money. Mr. Bhale, I'll come to you, but uh, Adil is yet to speak, and he's patiently heard everybody out. Let's bring in the Congress party on this conversation as well. Adil, should the farmers go back or should they wait for government to actually start a dialogue? Tanvi, this is an existential crisis for the farmers of this country. And I urge everybody that the time for fence-sitting is over. The time for having this binary is over. This government is determined to crush the rights of every citizen of this country to further their agenda. This is the same Prime Minister who coined the term Andolan Jeevis for the farmers of this country. This is the same ruling party and the same set of spokespersons and government and ministers who call the farmers Khalistanis, terrorists, Maoists and anti-nationals. So therefore, Mr. Narendra Modi is no love loss for the farmers of this country. This is clearly motivated on account of the electoral calculus, but be that as it may, Let's come to the core grievances of the farmers of this country. This has been a long-standing demand of the farmers that the MSP should be made a legal right. And let me tell you what Punjab has done. Punjab has passed to law in the territorial jurisdiction of Punjab below the MSP. Now, let's test what the BJP is saying. If the BJP is sincere that the MSP will not be abolished, then what is the difficulty to put in place a legal mechanism to have a minimum ceiling price? Number one. Number two, false, vexatious cases have been registered against the farmers over the past one year. Should those cases not be uh, withdrawn? Should the government not apologize to the farmers? Number three, more than 700 Anadatas, more than 700 sons of the soil have lost their lives in this struggle, in this peaceful and just struggle. But till date, not a single BJP spokesperson or a minister has expressed a word of empathy, has expressed a word of condolence. Are the farmers enemies of the state? Should the farmers be treated in such, such a shabby manner? These are pertinent questions. So therefore, the government of India, the owners entirely lies upon them. You would put a question to the previous speakers. The onus lies on the government. The government is for the people of this country. It is for the farmers of this country. The onus lies on the government to invite the farmers mm. and to understand their grievances. Mm. It is all very well for the government and their propaganda machinery to defame and slander the farmers. But please do not forget, these are the same farmers who feed us. These are the same farmers who send their children to the borders. These are the same farmers who make innumerable... But all of that is fine, and I agree with you that the government... <laughs> it is primarily the government's responsibility as we speak to listen to the farmers and see what can be done, and I'll get Shaina to respond to that in just a bit. But Adil, for all the grandstanding that can your I party... Can I just come in, Tanvi? I'm coming to you in just a bit. For all the grandstanding that your party and several other opposition parties do, for all the grandstanding that all political parties do, and the commentary that you're giving here about how important the Kisan is, just like the Jawan. Today, there was a parliamentary panel meeting slated
for a conversation on farmers and doubling of income of farmers. Out of the 29 MPs, 23 did not turn up and the meeting had to be adjourned. What message is the parliament sending to the farmers of this country? I'll respond to this. I'll respond to this. Let me tell you, uh, Tanvi, over the past seven years, Mr. Modi has reduced the parliament to a notice board. Parliamentary committees and subcommittees send their reports. Oh, Those reports are unanimously and summarily rejected. To bunking school. And the fact of the matter here is that our sincerity, our tenacity and our resilience to support what the then, farmer movement... What, what good are parliamentarians? No, Adil, that, that's not right. What good are, what good are parliamentarians? Why are we electing all of you? Why are we, why are we standing in queues and voting for parliamentarians if you will not allow the parliament to function? or? Even participate in these the meetings. Question, to answer the question which you put to me, please allow me to come. Give me 30 seconds. Let me... The fact of the me. matter is that it is the Congress party and the opposition leaders who have even been arrested, put under house arrest, who brave lachis for the cause of the farmers. The BJP is putting up a charade. Has the Prime Minister apologised? Has he one, one, sir, one minute, I am not convinced, and this is why unfair. This is this is betrayal continue. of why the people's trust. People of have voted. I'm sorry, China NC, you will have wait, to wait your wait, turn. Wait, the Congress wait, Party wait, must wait, answer wait, to me wait, today, wait, just wait, as the BJP, the TMC, wait, the Samajwadi wait, Party, the BSP, wait, the BJD, wait, the DMK, wait, the AIA DMK, for all the grandstanding that you do. There is no point, Adil, on doing all the dharna on the road when inside the parliament you are not willing to allow the parliament to work function and not willing to attend the parliamentary committee meetings, then what's the point? Don't be in the parliament. Give up your parliamentarian uh, seats and give it to somebody who wants to do the job of an MP. Let me tell you about the respect which the BJP has for parliament and parliamentary procedure. They did not even bother to wait for the parliamentary session to send a formal bill. They promulgated an ordinance in the middle of the pandemic and brought these laws. Are both of it, are so you are telling us about respect for parliamentary procedure. They have reduced it to a notice board. Okay, then it's a race it's down to the bottom. Name. It's a race down to the bottom. Congratulations. All parties seem to be doing great in that. China NC, please respond. I want to make two points. First, they stall parliament. Second, they do not allow parliament to function as legitimate voice of dissent as opposition. Isn't their duty to let parliament function? I want to say for all these critics sitting here, I just want to make one, I want to quote. When the prime minister says that to agitating farmer companions, return to your homes, fields and your families. Let us make a fresh start. Let's move forward to a new beginning. Today, the government has taken another important decision related to the agriculture sector. A committee will be set up for the agricultural committees to constitute and decide on matters like promotion of zero budgeting farming, that is natural farming, scientifically change the crop pattern, keeping in mind the changing requirements of the country and make MSP more effective and transparent. To all those critics on your panel, I say, when you talk about MSP, why even limit it to just the figures you're talking about when the farmer can even sell in the open market? market to corporates at much higher prices and when the Swaminathan committee suggested all these things you were why haven't you implemented when you implement you say now I want this I also want to say that whether it's state governments farmers agricultural scientists agricultural economists the prime minister has been a statesman because when he said clearly that the farmers I am doing this not just for you I am doing this for my country and if my country feels that this agitation needs to stop please go back to your homes we can dialogue we can discuss and we can implement every suggestion let me so just say this China, that we want to I, I think you know I would respectfully submit now now that now that the laws have been withdrawn let's not go down the path of still defending those laws and talking about the merits and claiming that farmers would have necessarily got higher prices had you opened up the markets via these laws because the laws are now gone Sandeep, what we need to discuss time, taking taking one minute please taking a cue take taking a cue from what the prime minister himself said looking towards a fresh start 
having a dialogue working together for a fresh start. The fresh start would mean to now have a conversation on increasing the farmer's income, which actually has gone down since the gov this government came to power, is not even catching up to the standards of basic inflation since this government has come to power. Contrary to your uh, intention of doubling the farmer's income by 2022, which is next year, the income has actually gone down. So, Shaina, when we talk about bringing in actual real benefits for the farmers, we are far away from it. And a parliamentary panel can't even get together with 29 MPs to discuss these issues. That, unfortunately, is the problematic part. Adil. Okay, we seem to have lost that line with May Adil Bhopara. May I just Bupara. make one small point, yeah. Sandeep? Yes. Can I just make a small point? See, you know, government after government has only given freebies, subsidies, SOPs, loan waivers, all kinds of subsidies. We are probably, under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi, the only government that is talking about actually reforming and making it an Atma Nirbhar Kisan. When you have a Fasal Bima Yojana or you have the best technology, the best insurance schemes, pension schemes for our farmers, etc. These are only opportunities for them to avail of what we are trying to propose, which is in guidelines with the Swaminathan Committee. Mm. These three farm laws, yes, they have been repealed. We are not going into the merits and demerits of the case, but we have to long term see that we are not giving subsidies and we are empowering the lives so that they can, we are talking about MSP Actually, so today, yeah, nobody but why can't they send way above the MSP to corporates and private players? No, no, absolutely not. Where nobody is talking about the subsidies. Why, why is there such grand opposition to the fact when the suggestion is made that bring in an MSP and let the private players pay the MSP. The grand opposition to that fact comes because you know that the private players may or may not want to pay that high price. There is absolutely no absolutely no assurance that a high price would come just because of these laws. That being said, we are talking about the farmer's income now and are we actually making them Atmanirbhar? Two farming experts here. First, Mr. Tuyogan, the other to you first. Um... I didn't want to be combative today. Look, the Prime Minister has conceded. He has decided to repeal the three laws. So I thought the BJP must have learned their lessons. And uh, therefore, you know, what's the point in kicking them unnecessarily? I would request China and C not to please go on and on with these freebies and subsidies. You know, why don't you go back to your party leaders and make up your mind? On the one hand, you say we have given biggest Kisan Samman Nidhi in the world. On the other hand, you say others were doing freebies. We are not doing freebies. I mean, what are you saying? Just, just think hard about what you are saying. Uh, you are saying we have in introduced the best insurance, fossil insurance policy in the country. Do you know Gujarat government, BJP government of Gujarat, has turned down the national, the Prime Minister Fasal Bima Yojana, saying sorry, we can't implement such a bad scheme. Yeah, Do you sure. know that actually? the number of insured farmers has gone down in the country since the Prime Minister Fasal Bhima Yojana was introduced. As I said, I didn't want to get into these things. This is not what we are debating today. Why don't you focus on the real issue? MSP is not a freebie for your information. MSP is not the kind of subsidy which is not paid anywhere else in the world. And China Ji, if you do think MSP is a subsidy which we can do without, why don't you advise the government not to announce MSP at all? Don't announce it. Why do you, when for the last 60 years, this fraud is being perpetuated with the farmers? The government twice a year announces MSP. What does that mean? The government says officially, we think this is the bare minimum price the farmers deserve. And then the government refuses to implement it. Government's own reports show that only 6% farmers receive it. The government sleeps over it. And then farmers come and say, no, please ensure that we get it. Someone gets on national television and says, we don't believe in freebies. I mean, do you think before what you're speaking? Does your party approve of it? Let, let's not get into it. Let's be serious. Minimum support price is a, is a sacred commitment of this country for the last 60 years.
It's a sacred commitment that has been violated by all governments so far, including your government. It so happened that the prime minister from your government said farmers deserve a gift. I'm going to announce them a great gift. He gives three laws. Farmers say, thank you very much. We don't need your gift. Take it away. But incidentally, okay. do it's a gift, gift that we want, that is MSP. Now the prime minister says, okay, if you're so unhappy with me, I take back my gift. And then he forgets that he had said, you deserve a gift. That's what farmers are reminding him of. Yes. And does your party believe that MSP is wrong? Does your party believe that MSP is a subsidy and a freebie? If so, please come out in open. Then let us see what happens. Yes, actually, I was trying to draw that distinction that I don't think that the MSP can keep, be equated to freebies or subsidies, even from you know Nobody the standpoint of most that political the MSP parties. Is a freebie. Yes, so so right now we're not talking about any other kind of subsidies. Great if if your party in the government has tried to get done with other kinds of subsidies. Farm loan waivers were, or, are only needed if there is a but dire situation or when political parties want to win elections. I am with you on that as well. But w w the, a distinction needs to be made between MSP and subsidies, like you are also now saying, Shaina. Mr. Bale has been wanting to make a point. Let's listen in. Yes. See, uh, <laughs> all this Samajwad of uh, Yogendra ji and uh, Vikaswad of Shaina ji, let them fight. I am not interested in fighting with them, but the, the, the thing about MSP is very clear. It doesn't fix into the economics. If MSP is given to the farmers and MSP is made some statutory, uh, statutory thing, then farming will not be a commercial activity anymore. It is not going to be a commercial activity. It will be... Because uh, see what uh, Mr. Yogendra Yadav said, that uh, like uh, uh, MREGS, MR like uh, wages, it should be statutory. We are not, we are not, uh, <laughs> we are not the workers. We are the owners of the farms. And we don't want to be workers. We want farm to be a, pro it is a, pro it is a largest private sector in India, and we want it to be a private sector and it remain private sector. It, we want it to be a commercial activity. We don't want it to be a, uh, we don't want to be workers, wage getting workers like. These people, uh, let them fight uh, between Samajwad and uh, what Shaina uh, NC's uh, okay. Vikaswad. Okay. These, these people are going to, these people are going to make our activity non-commercial, non-economic, and uh, what uh, Yogendra Yadav is saying, history has proven, and uh, history has proven all the things. If he reads history uh, clearly and he understands history, then he should read history. Okay. He said uh, not even history, he should read research. Well, well research okay, I, I, I'm going to urge both of you to not get into this, you know, back and forth, which becomes personal. Uh, you have your views, Mr. Bahale, no, and so does so so does Yogendra Yadav and Shaina NC. I am mean, also going to farm? say I am completely out of time. I so I am going to thank what all of you. Yes, no personal comments from anybody uh, is okay. Thank you to all of you for joining me on this conversation. Tomorrow, the decision will be made whether or not the farmers at this point should go back from the capital borders back to their towns and their villages and back to their farming. But irrespective of whether they stay on or not, what is essential is a recognition and acknowledgement by the politicians of our country, by the ruling party and the opposition party, that the issues of the farmers still remain. That the repealing of the three laws is not the end of the matter because what was problematic for them the fact that they are buried under debt the fact that they do not have enough income coming in from what they are growing the fact that their land parcels are getting smaller and smaller and their incomes are actually going down the fact that they need the right kind of support when the sowing season comes the fact that they need fertilizers at the right time better insurance schemes that can be implemented on ground all of those issues still remain and so a conversation between the two sides is required. And the government needs to send an indication that, okay, we have heard you, these laws don't work. Now let's talk about what will work. Think about it. Thank you for joining us on this conversation.